Because <laughs> I just came out as a Swifty very recently. <laughs> I love it. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here to our session on mentorship and reciprocal growth. We're so glad you're here with us. This is one of our last session blocks of the day for our Equity Summit. So thank you for being here and you know, taking a deep breath in. I invite everybody to just kind of feel your feet on the ground, whether it's midday, whether it's late in the evening, where you are, and to just kind of arrive in this moment. Um, my name is Allison Wright, and I am the Mentorship Program Manager here at Startout. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm so excited to be with this incredible panel to talk about the empowerment and the growth that comes through mentorship. And we're gonna talk about all things mentorship and really dive deep into this topic and get so many incredible perspectives um, about the knowledge, the expertise and the experience that are conveyed through a mentorship relationship. Um, so as we start off, I wanna invite our panelists to introduce themselves um, and to take that moment to tell us who you are. Uh, Madeline, if you can start us off, tell us who you are. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, what up everybody, I'm Madeline Avec. Uh, pronoun she, her. I am a psychotherapist, a coach, and the founder and CEO of The Better Spot, which is an incredible sustainable wellness company. We are putting practitioners first. And um, I'm just, I'm super pumped to be here. I'm in partially cloudy Atlanta. I hop back and forth between Atlanta, LA, and Chicago. And I'm really, really excited about this conversation. I'm so passionate about mentorship. Um, yeah, all the things. So super pumped to be here. Great to have you. Cecilia, go for it. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Cecilia Fisher Benitez. I use she, her pronouns as well. Uh, I'm a senior program manager at Latinas in Tech. Um, I actually manage all our entrepreneurship program, our professional development program, and our mentorship program as well. Uh, and I am also a VC fellow alum from Chicago Blend um, and also a deal partner with Ghana's Ventures, trying to scout good talent out there. Um, and I am based in Chicago as well. So Madeline, we should grab a coffee when you're here. <laughs> I love it. Thank you both. And we do have um, Jonathan Mentor, who is planning to join us, and we will hold space and make space for him when he can jump into the session with us. Um, so between everyone on this panel, what we have are not only founders, experienced founders and mentors, but also obviously mentorship program managers. And so what we're really looking to do with the session is to open up this discussion on mentorship. And I'd love to kick things off with the both of you with really talking about the value and the impact um, of mentorship. Cecilia, I'd love to start with you. Why is mentorship so important in the launching of a business and having yeah, a mentor? I mean yeah, for me, you know, it's all about guidance and experience. So, you know, starting a business can be really overwhelming and having a mentor that has gone and, and navigated through that entrepreneurship journey, it, it provides valuable guidance and experience. So mentors can offer insights into like various aspects of business, such as strategy, operations, marketing, finance, team management, everything. So their experience can really help you avoid common pitfalls and in, in make informed decisions saving you time, resources, and, and potential mistakes. So those insights and th those experiences shared by mentors can significantly enhance your chances of like becoming more successful and being and, and navigating the challenges and complexities of, of the entrepreneurship journey and make more effectively. That's wonderful. And I just have to say, it's so interesting. You, you named something that so many mentors share on mentor applications here at Startout of why they want to mentor. It has to do with saving entrepreneurs the struggle that they've already gone through and saying, I'd love to share that, you know, my insight and wisdom so that someone yeah. can have a smoother journey, you know, than I had. So thank you for that. How about you, Madeline? Why do you think mentorship is so crucial, especially for you as a founder in launching your business? Yeah. I mean, mentorship is goodness gracious. It's, it's so, I'll start at like, I guess the, the, the most foundational level of why I'm so passionate about it. Um, it's because it's human to human. Right. Especially in, in a space, entrepreneurship, start out, it's super sexy, hashtag this, that and the other, hustle, hustle culture, all these different things, all these all these very easy kind of distractions. The beautiful thing about mentorship is it will always be and always has been about a human to human connection, a human first connection, a give first of service connection. And 
the power behind someone giving you their time. I'm gonna say that again, <laughs> right? Someone is giving you their time. If that, if, if that doesn't leave you shook, right, to the importance of who you are as a human, the impact that you're making, what you're building, the vision that, that you have and the vision that they obviously see through you, I don't, I don't know what else is, right? So um, mentorship is super important to me because of that primarily. And then also, you know, from the kind of corporate side of it, it's the fact that you are getting such a dynamic perspective from someone who maybe they're far ahead of you in, in the capital game. Maybe they've exited five, four times. Maybe they haven't raised a cent. Maybe they've been bootstrapped. So however they've gotten to that point, it's the unique experience that they have being able to look at where you are and they're outside of what you're experiencing. Cause it's so, it, it happens often where founders, small business owners, however you, you, you want to coin yourself, you get blinders on and you get so attached to what you're building that you sometimes put yourself in a position to be your own biggest enemy when you really should be your biggest cheerleader. Um, so the mentorship relationships that I've had really allow me to kind of do this every now and again. <laughs> right? um, and, and I think it's I look forward. I love how you said that because it's not just about having a, that different perspective. It's about being in touch with someone who's got this sort of, you know, 30,000 foot perspective because they're not in your business. They're not on the ground in your business and they're not feeling the struggles within your business so that they can kind of bring that more 360, 10,000 foot perspective that, that can be so useful. I know one of the things when I initially chatted with you both was we were talking about co-leadership and mentorship and how mentorship is not um, something where knowledge is bestowed upon the mentee and the growth never happens with the mentor. I'd love to hear both of your perspectives on what co-leadership looks like, right? There's, and, and Madeline, you really spoke to this just now in, in a way, which is the, it's, they're bringing something to the table that perhaps you as a founder do not yet have, and yet there's still a co-leadership dynamic. Can you talk, either one of you, feel free to jump in and share your thoughts on that. You can start rattling if you want. Um, yeah, I mean, co-leadership co or, or reciprocal mentorship, mm -hmm. it's, I, I think it's super important also just from the space of, and I, I'm completely biased y'all, like I'm constantly gonna like throw terminology in there of like therapist speak or whatever, but you know, it's, it's that idea that we have to eliminate the scarcity mindset and the gross majority of founders, especially um, underrepresented founders are entering into a space where they already feel as if they have less to give. And the patriarchal and historical kind of positioning of mentorship is very top down oh, I've got this mentor and this mentor knows everything and I know nothing and I'm just going to be this open vessel and accept everything that they have to tell me, right? When you really look at it, they're giving you their time because they have a specific perspective or a strength or something to offer. But at the end of the day, they're also looking to receive something, right? They're looking to receive, whether that be friendship, whether that be uh, inspiration or ideation. I've had so many mentorship relationships where I've pushed back or said something and they've been like, oh, I'm actually going to, I'm going to use that at my next meet. I've never thought about doing that. Or, and then it, it, it moves very quickly into an ebb and a flow and a harmony versus something that's very linear. Right. So I, I think that there's a beauty in the ability to work with your mentor, to co-lead, to be reciprocal, to have that give and take, um, because it's necessary. And also because not all dynamics are gonna always look the same. There's some times where my mentors call me and they're like, yo, I'm kind of going through this thing right now. Like, do you have a minute? And I'm like, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, and you sit and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely here because you now have that rapport and that experience with them. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's like a mutually rewarding experience for both, right? Like, it, you know, it, it offers an opportunity for personal and professional growth for both the mentor and the mentee. So mentoring can enhance like leadership and communication skills, you know, and mentors can learn to effectively like convey their knowledge and, and provide guidance as well. Um, and, and mentors can also like expand their networks 
through interactions with mentees, mentors can connect with other entrepreneurs, with other experts, other investors, and, and professionals who, who um, are maybe not directly associated with them in the, in the startup ecosystem. So I feel like there's a lot of different benefits that they can also get out of the, a, a relationship with a mentee. Gaining those fresh perspectives, like mentors um, or mentoring entrepreneurs and startup founders in particular, like, you know, it exposes mentors to innovative ideas, to unique challenges, to different approaches for, for problem solving. So it's, it's, it's a co-leadership that both can develop, not just the mentee and, and from all the experience, but also the, the, uh, the mentor as well. Well said. Thank you both for your perspectives on that. I think that's a great segue itself into just this topic of reciprocal growth, because there's the co-leadership and the mentorship. And then there's this, this growth that happens on both sides in a mentorship relationship that when it's built in a healthy and sustainable way, um, and there's a really strong match between mentee and mentor, what do, would you say, Cecilia, are the hallmarks, kind of like the, the, the main um, touchstones of a mentorship relationship where there's reciprocal growth happening, where both sides are benefiting? I, for me, I think it, and I think, I don't know if there might be a question about this later, but I think it's all connected through like vulnerability, like being vulnerable and like, and, um, and kind of setting that stage for reciprocal, for reciprocal growth, like in a mentorship, you know, relationship, when both mentors are are open and honest and vulnerable with each other, I think it creates this environment of trust and authenticity um, that kind of promotes deeper insights and understanding of, of the experience. So I, I think all of that, like for me, it's like all about encouraging self-reflection and kind of being vulnerable you know, to to that, to that experience of of not being afraid to to share your fears, to to those areas of growth, I think are super important. So I think I would say those are my main main go tos. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing, and welcome, Jonathan. We're so glad to have you. You have jumped in at the perfect time. I'd love to actually pause and invite you to introduce yourself um, to everyone watching and listening, and everyone who watches and listens after the fact. Tell us who you are. Sure. So my name is Jonathan J. Mentor, native New Yorker. I'm now in sunny Florida. I'm the founder and the CEO of Successman, and we take B2B startups that are diversely led from $1 million to $10 million in annual recurring revenue using RevOps Science. And by doing that, we hope to provoke economies for queer people, Black people, brown people, all the other people. So here I am. Oh, we're so glad to have you. And um, you're kind of jumping into our discussion. We were just talking about um, vulnerability and reciprocal growth. And Jonathan, I'd love to just um, send this question right over to you. Why is vulnerability such an essential ingredient and part of a successful mentorship relationship? This is such a delicious question. I believe strongly that when a founder who's trying to in essence, change the world, has a really structured plan, and they have to kind of get down on one knee and admit that they need support, they need help, they need resources. It's really important to be vulnerable, not only from uh, a business perspective, like these are the things that could potentially affect uh, my business, my startup, my growth, my funding, my team, whatever, but it's the mindset too, right? So. What's unique about founders who are underrepresented and vulnerability is that they always carry like a trauma on their shoulder. And that takes up a lot of creative mental real estate. So you kind of have to like get that elephant out of the room first, be vulnerable and say, here are my superpowers. Here are my vulnerabilities. I'm here to listen, disagree a lot, deploy a little, but we're both here to help each other because as a mentee, I want to help you grow. And as a mentor, I hope that you help me grow as well. Thank you for sharing that. And Madeline, I'd, I'd love to offer that to you as well. What is the role? And we haven't explicitly said it for those who are watching. So Jonathan is Madeline's mentor matched through Startout. Um, and so these two um, have been in a mentorship uh, pairing for several months now. Madeline, how has vulnerability played a role in your mentorship relationship? 
Um, yeah, I mean, vulnerability, and this is for my mentorship relationship with Jonathan and across the board. So I don't want to just like constantly, when, when I got to single you out, I'll single you out. But, <laughs> but you know, I, vulnerability has play, played a huge role for me and my mentorship relationships in general, um, because I require connection in order to generate action. And what that means for me is if I feel like you're talking at me, down to me, if you're selling to me, if you, any of those things, immediately I'm like, boop, boop. And I'm just in my brain, I'll be nodding and smiling and giving you all the cues that I'm listening and absorbing what you're saying. And I'll be in my head thinking about whatever I got to do next week and what I got to set up for my to-do list, right? So if I don't feel that there is a authentic connection an offering of self outside of just the, you know, the, the business kind of scripts that you use in traditional um, business or corporate kind of mentorships, I'm not going to value what you're saying because I'm not going to believe that it's true. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I feel like there are a lot of opportunities for really unique vulnerability and also said that has to happen within myself. I have to trust that you're being authentic and vulnerable with me so then I can be authentic and vulnerable with you. Because if not, then we're just going to be sitting on a couch of plastic the whole time and we'll let the <laughs> time pass, and, you know. Um, so yeah. We have definitely let our hair down, Madeline and I. I can attest to that. From the pool, I show up in the gym with my head. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm here for the meeting. Like, how can I help this week, you know? Everything. I mean, next time I'm going to be taking down the braids and oiling my scalp. And the next time, I mean, just for real, like the whole situation. <laughs> can I add I, I mean it. I met you both I mean I could tell that you both definitely cultivated like this like resilience between the two of you you know when when both of you are vulnerable like with each other like it, it kind of deepens that connection and that mutual trust and mutual respect that's that strong relationship it, it facilitates like a more meaningful mentorship experience and it encourages you know you to actively seek guidance and, and that support because you feel comfortable with each other so I love that Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd love to ask too because it, it is such a it's, it's such an intentional thing for us to create like vulnerability doesn't just happen and rapport doesn't just happen if we leave it to just happen it's not going to happen or it's going to be to your point now it's going to feel um, insincere and inauthentic what's one tip you would give a new mentee mentor to help them sort of set the stage for that authentic um creation of rapport and that vulnerability i'll offer that to any of you i i'll jump in i feel as though when you come with a really open mind and you trust that although there may be moments of friction you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And sometimes when you have an internal team, there is no internal pressure because as nice as you are, as much culture as you build, as much vulnerability as you try, you're still the boss, you're still the leader. When somebody else comes in and they call you on your shit, like it's like, oh, like damn, and I'm not paying this person. This person has absolutely no interest in my business. If they're telling me this, and pushing me in this direction, it has to be for a good reason. But that all comes from rapport, right? You have to trust that the person on the other end of the relationship has your best interest and you trust them. One of the perfect examples that Madeline taught me as the mentor, I come in and I say, Madeline, all I'm ever gonna think about with you is I'm gonna ask you questions and the answer is always gonna be, does it lead to revenue, yes or no? Because I do growth for startups. And so she went, (laughs) I remember the day at the pool, she's like, oh, you know, but what about integrity? And I'm like, integrity, let's just get some revenue. And then later, we can see some integrity and, you know, but you know what? It was interesting because when she took me through her intentionality, her why, why did I start the better spot? It made so much sense. And so I had to find a way to gently you know, push her in the direction of giving herself permission. You can ask for money. This is a business. It's not a hobby. Let's go. And although it took a lot of uh, (laughs) maneuvering, we were able to, and we met in the middle. And she taught me that, she taught me 
the lesson that I'll never forget is that sometimes revenue isn't always the end of be all, but integrity can also be central to a business operation. Thanks, Madeline. That's huge, y'all. That's huge. <laughs> But I mean, because yeah, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yes, that's a that's a huge point, and you've never told me that, so thank you. I'm, I'm super excited to hear. That. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that story, Jonathan. I'd love to um, shift the conversation back to something that um, several of you have kind of um, pointed to and alluded to, which is the topic of of barriers founders face, cultural barriers, and especially intersectionality, and. I'd love to talk about and hear your perspectives on how mentorship can support a founder, especially when they have multiple intersectional intersections within their own identity. Cecilia, how can mentorship help identify and address some of the cultural barriers and even the imposter syndrome that founders face, whether they're launching their business, they're in their business, just in their entrepreneurial journey in general? Yeah, and I and I actually really like this question because cultural barriers is not just about, you know, like it's not this applies to everybody. It doesn't just apply for founders and entrepreneurs. I think it's even for I mean, I work for Latinas in technology. So I, you know, I we we see this this common problem and, and, and not a problem, but an issue and, and something to think to talk about because as as a Latina, you know, we're we're we are growing up with our parents telling us to, you know, like don't make a, a buzz, you know, you'll be noticed. Don't ask for promotions. They're going to recognize your work. And like, there's a lot of things that were taught from the beginning from our, from growing up that is not necessarily how corporate America works or even like the, the startup world works. You know, we, you, there's a saying in Mexico that we say, Calladita te ves más bonita. like, you know, if, if you're quiet, you look prettier. Like, you know, don't. And, and I feel like we, we always grow up with this and we actually take, carry it everywhere we go. And I think these are things that we need to unlearn. There's so many cultural, uh, um, you know, myths that we grew up with that are that are that need to be addressed. And I think being able to speak with other people that have been there and that know that that's not the way to go. In this case, how Jonathan was wanted to know about, you know, not the not necessarily like the ethical thing or like the integrity thing. Like we need to talk first about how it really is. And I think that is what is often missed is because of the way that we're brought up and the way that we see the world doesn't always match up to how it actually is when it's when you're raising capital, when you are trying to um, create this business from scratch and you you try to do it the way that you were raised. You know, you try to do it aligned with your values. And that's great. You, know, you should still do that. But also at the same time, you need to be aware of how things work and how things operate that it that is doesn't always match up to morality essentially mm -hmm. so i think it's it's super it's a super important conversation to be aware of when you are trying to launch a business and when you're trying to to get your career going thank you so much for sharing that jonathan I, i'll ask you the same question how do you feel like mentorship can help in this arena with overcoming those cultural barriers i think that walking your own walk is underrated in startups with anyone that's underrepresented. And I'll go back to one of my favorite words that's not discussed enough in startup circles is trauma. I remember one of the early conversations with Madeline and I said, listen, your whole mind is like, imagine like a Monopoly board, right? And Monopoly intentionally has a set amount of houses and hotels, right? When you run out of houses and hotels, there's nothing that you can do but move it from one end to another. So imagine as a black or queer or a brown founder that half of your hotels are taken because they're holding on to trauma. So now you can't collect any money from those. So when you enter the Monopoly game of startups, so to speak, it's always important to unload that trauma and it manifests in very different ways for different people. For example, my intersection is, so I'm black, I'm Latinx, I'm undereducated. I came from a, you know, from a poor under-resourced family, all of the things. And little by little by little, like an onion, as I started growing in, in income and in finance, right? I hit my first million dollars. And then I realized like backpedaling, like I shed all my skin. Like first it was, I have an mm -hmm. accent. 
Second, it was, oh, that I'm gay. I can't say that. Third, it was, oh, I'm not dressed the part. Fourth, it was, oh, but I don't play golf on the weekends. I don't have a boat to go and hang out with my friends in on the weekends. I don't wear wear pastel shirts and tuck them in with a little alligator over, you know, all of these things. Then it was the tattoos. Then it was, you know, I don't have college stories. I dropped out three times, but you know what? What's interesting about underrepresented founders in that regard of that intersectionality is it feels so good to say, fuck you, you don't get that version of me for when you make it. When you make that first $100,000, it's like, ooh. And then you make your 500, it's like, whoa. And then it's like a million, it's like validation. And then you get your first C check and you're like, whoa. And it's just like, no, no, you belonged here the entire time. You just didn't give yourself permission to belong. So stepping into that vulnerability with full authenticity, I mean, it just, it, it, <laughs> a man with nothing, a human with nothing to hide can never be exposed. So embrace your intersectionality from the start and it's going to attract more revenue than you think. Mm -hmm. I think I got the quote right. You belonged here the entire time. You just didn't give yourself permission to belong yet. Yeah. Yep. Right. It's really powerful. Frame that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Madeline, what are your thoughts on that topic? Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, I feel like Celia and Jonathan, you know, just took me to church on, on, on that side. I'll take it from the other side of the spectrum of, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> of, um, you know, the, the idea that intersectionality creates almost internal division. And so one of the most beautiful things that I've found is even with Jonathan was like, okay, you know, Afro-Latina. Okay, well, I'm not Afro-Latina. I'm just, um, you know, just African-American. I'm just a black queer woman. Okay, Florida, this, all these different things where like you look on paper and you think, oh, we have so much in common, but yet our, our backgrounds are so different mm -hmm. and our stories are so different and our lives are so different. And there comes this space of, I can either sit there and come in and flex and be the South Side Chicago chick and be hella boundary and be like, ba 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 wild 100s, whatever, I'm not here for it. <laughs> or I can sit back and just, ah, I feel like, well, or I can sit back, right? And I can just be like, okay, wait a minute. There's so much overlap here. That overlap and that underestimation of us both, right, is going to come from such an unbelievable space to create something that I didn't even think was necessarily possible from, from our matchup, right? Like just, just so many different things. And so I, I feel like it's super important for all founders to kind of step into that. Cause when you go through the application of applying and saying, I would like a mentor, naturally because of data, you have to check the boxes. You literally have to go through and check all the boxes. And there's this fear of, well, I don't only want folks from these boxes, but I also do want folks from these boxes, but should I check more boxes than like, I've got a cousin who's like 118th, like maybe if I, can I just, right? And so you find yourself in this space of knowing that you are enough, but is your mentor going to see you as your whole self? And, and even, in, even in, in Celia's quote, right? About, you know, being quiet and being pretty, like, the moment you said that, I was like, yes, my mom, Tupelo, Mississippi, is like, be seen, be pressed, and say nothing, <laughs> right? So it's, 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 it's so much the same. It's so much the same. It's so shared. Um, and I think that that recognition and that celebration of the differences, but how the differences lead us back to one another are equally powerful, infinitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. This is such a great conversation. I, I'm, there's so much, there's so many directions I could take this in with all of you. And one of the topics I know we wanted to get to too was about what like really healthy and sustainable mentorship feels like, what it actually means to create a mentorship relationship that feels healthy. It's not just that growth is happening, but it has that sense of, of kind of wellness and, and, balance inherent in it. Madeline, I'd love to start with you, especially given, you know, this is your business and what you do um, as a founder. Tell us about what you think creates health and wellness in a mentorship relationship. Woo! So many things, but I'll, I'll just give you, I'll give you my top three, right? Um, mutual respect first and foremost. Um, and the interesting thing is that 
because I myself am continuing to unlearn, decolonize my mind, my vocabulary, reassociate myself with words and phrases. I am going to say some things and I'm always going to give the asterisks of, and it can mean whatever, right? So respect means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Safety means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, but those are two things that immediately come to mind. And then, you know, one of the biggest things that I didn't realize until this past week is fun. Like, I have to enjoy <laughs> being in community with this person. Jonathan and I legit had not spoken for like over a month because something will pop up on his calendar. Something will pop up on my calendar. So we continue to have that resiliency because we wanted to speak to one another. Okay. Obviously to track what was happening with the company and this, that, and the other, but I also wanted the Kiki. I wanted to know what was going on. I had to see, I was like, how are you? What's Got to have a drink together by the pool. You know, a little something. So, so there, you know, it's it's the respect that creates the safety that creates the enjoyment. And I think that when you have a wonderful joining of all of those things, you know that the mentorship is is something that can just continue on, you know, almost indefinitely. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I love it, Cecilia. I'd love to ask you too, especially as a mentorship program manager. What for you, as, as you're, you know, hearing about matches and as you chat with mentees and mentors, what do you think creates health and sustainability in a mentorship relationship? I think, and I, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot you can say here, but I think um, when both of you, I mean, just fostering empathy, fostering, you know, validation and like that inclusion to, to actually feel like you belong in this pair, you know, there's, there, there needs to be that cultural understanding you know that that you're here to learn from each other and and create a space for growth i think that those are the super important things that i want to feel myself too when i'm when i meet someone when i want to learn from someone because i want to create that profound sense of belonging for for myself i think that sense of belonging really enhances like confidence and resilience and motivation and it really empowers you to navigate through challenges and and it you know encourages me to keep going to achieve those goals so i would say th those are some of the things that i look for in mentorship you know from anyone uh when i when i want to grow in in any direction that's great thank you so much i know we've hinted and talked kind of peripherally at the topic of feedback right and having kind of what can be perceived as challenging conversations um but I'd love to, to ask all three of you, and Jonathan, we can start with you, about what are your top tips for giving and receiving constructive feedback? Um, be direct and be unapologetic because I'm confident that if you're involved in a mentorship relationship, I'm gonna assume that there's mutual like and trust there. So if I have to, and I think I've done it and then we just like laugh it off. If I have to listen to a harebrained idea and say, that's bullshit, you're nuts. Like you're not really stepping into what your priority needs to be. There's definitely a better way to do this. Actually, it sounds kind of goofy to me. If you really want me to be honest, let me tell you this. I mean, that's important. Like words matter, respect matters. All that aside, Madeline knows my personality. I'm not the type of, well. You know, I have a certain masculine energy. You know, I identify as a guy. So there's testosterone. So when I kind of have to be like, <laughs> no, don't like that. She already knows. I see his face and I hear his words, but I know it comes from a good place. Maybe I did need to hear that. Wonder where it's coming from rather than a reacting guarded. Like, why would you tell me that I'm the founder and I'm really, really creative? I'm confident that one of the most important things that, that humans look for in a mentorship, at least from my perspective, is a results, right? Everything is going to be very, very, very urgent. Everything, right? But not everything's a priority. And it depends on if you're a founder like Madeline that the absolute zenith, the apex point is, am I in integrity 1,000% of the time? I kind of get beat in the head and I'm like, oh, that integrity thing, let's get some money. But it's important. So I have to move in the direction of her goal and not take her off that North Star while still being able to inject her with the knowledge that I have, which is revenue growth. So I'm like, okay, well, what's the priority right now? Let's, you know, and it's an interesting 
it's an interesting and it's almost a, a beautiful challenge because what ends up happening from there is is we both walk away we both come up with great solutions and then we actually get to measure results right like madeline what did you get done and she's like oh my god a b and c and i didn't know i was gonna be able to do it but i did it and now i'm on to that like that's where the magic happens in a mentorship for me madeline so the question was the 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 magic or how top top tips for giving and receiving feedback that creates oh. the magic and creates the results yes yes that creates okay so the feedback um who i mean I, I would say that like for for me in order to give valuable feedback you have to also be open to whatever's going to be on the other side of that um right again like mentors will come in and, and, and they'll have a position or an expertise. And like, I mean, that was Jonathan and I's conversation, right? Like the expertise yeah. is like measurable, data-driven, repeatable, like this is what the investors are gonna wanna see. And then I'm on this side being like, cool, okay, but what about these other things that are like fundamental to my core, right? Um, it's interesting because like the pushback and the way that I gave the pushback was very much like, okay, and I sat with it, and yes, and I hear you, and I understand, but also this thing is still, how, how are we going, like, not, not, not butting heads, not being confrontational, but being solidly immovable. I was like, I respect you, you're dope as fuck, like, this is amazing, this for me is never going to change, so we need to figure out how we going to be over here, and, and in turn, his openness to that, after some consistency <laughs> was very much like, okay, wow, all right, oh, all right. And his openness allowed me to continue to be open, which then made the feedback, even though it was sometimes, you know, contrary to, to ideas that I came in with, the best founders are the ones that, I always use the phrase, I don't pivot, I expand. I'm never turning away from anything. Right. You go to my website right now. My business says I do X and I'm going to do that. But in the event that I need to capitally make some shifts, I will keep those core things and I will expand to include other things. And so I think that that's something that's super necessary when you're when you're in that relationship. Yeah. And I mean, I can just add a little bit more here to what both of them kind of said as well. Um, and and so I look at it from like two different perspectives. Like I have two people that report to me as well. And and when I'm talking to them, like I want to be proactive. Like I I want to be um, helpful. So for me, like when I'm giving feedback, I like to um, instead of just pointing out the problems, like I want to offer solutions for improvement. Like I want to be more solutions oriented and provide like practical steps or some recommendations on like how can they address this and 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 how this feedback can actually work because i want to make sure that it's working and that's just they're just not listening um so yes and then for receiving i mean listening really and and, and like like jonathan mentioned like being open-minded and like receptive like i always try to assume positive intent right whenever i'm receiving feedback as well like i want to be able to approach feedback with like this open mindset of of recognizing that i don't have all the answers and there's definitely a lot of opportunity for growth um i don't want i want to avoid becoming offensive or dismissive or defensive or, or, or uh, dismissive and instead like really listen to understand the feedback and the perspective that is being shared with me so I think those are the main things that I, I like to recommend for people when it comes to like being proactive and, and giving feedback, but also like listen and be open minded to receiving. So I would say those things. Can I add one more thing? Because I just remembered how important it is and how much time it saved me. And it's the concept of painting it done. Because mm -hmm. sometimes mentorships can be confused for like a therapy session. So I'm not Madeline. I can't do that. Right. So if we need to vent, I can send you to the better spot. The better spot is going to blow up. Go check it out. Um, that's that. But painting it done in the middle of a conversation helps so much. I'll give you an example. If a founder is struggling with this thing, it's like, okay, but then why? What are you trying to do? Well, I want to get to a million dollars in annual revenue, Jonathan. I haven't hit it yet. I'm like, okay, well, that's $67,000 a month. How are you doing that? Well, oh shit. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm charging enough or I don't have enough customers of that. And then when you say what's the end game, 
it gets creative in the feedback that you're giving because you almost let them walk themselves into it. I'm like, I, I have a specific founder, right? They wanted a specific price point. And I was like, I don't like that price point. We're going to go with this price point over here, right? And when I painted it, okay, so what is the goal, right? We want to have, we have several, the angle, million dollars, right? If you charge this, how the heck are you going to get to this in this amount of time? So what other ways can we, and it was like a strike of lightning. Like, oh, I get it. That's why that matters. Okay, let me rethink this. And then they come back with a different solution and it gives them so much validation because it's like you you did that on your own buddy like you did that all on you because you focused on what is the end game what i'm doing today and is it moving in the direction of my goal of the answer is no the answer is simply have to do something to change paint it done paint it done thank you so much these are such great perspectives i the word that kept coming up from all of you is openness like and 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 my perception too from what you shared too was an empathetic kind of openness like bringing understanding bringing direct communication being honest and authentic and vulnerable but also that openness to give the feedback to receive the feedback it's awesome i'm mindful of time and i want to leave a few minutes for any of our folks on this call to ask questions if you have a question please feel free to put it in the chat and we are happy to answer and take a little time to address them. And while we're waiting for those, I also want to offer, especially because you just hit the nail right on the head, um, Jonathan, with talking about um, painting it done, goal setting. It's one of the topics that comes up frequently in mentorship. And I think sometimes just the, the word, the phrase goal setting can feel a little bit linear to people, but how does kind of identifying core goals and mentorship play a crucial role in the success and results you're able to create. So I actually have a cheat sheet for this and Madeline's going to be like, oh yeah, I remember that thing. So the first, like one of the very first questions after establishing trust is a very, and I didn't come up with this, by the way, this is strat ops training in case anybody's curious. But if you look at the entire state of the business from the highest level, getting out of the weeds of the technical, looking at it from the outside in, you have to answer four questions. You have to answer, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? What is missing from what I'm doing? And what's confusing about what I'm doing? It's called RWMC, right, wrong, missing, and confused. And what's interesting thing, what's interesting about that is it's such a simple, you know, it's like four columns, go figure this out, months, founders, months to finish this thing. And then what's even more interesting is that when they compare what they consider right, wrong, missing, and confused with their sounding board of humans, whether that's investors, other mentors, employees, freelancers, it's always different. And when they cross compare, but they think I'm doing this right and I think I'm doing wrong and I think I'm missing this, but they already say I'm doing that. Like it, it gives you such clarity on what are the priority items because if everyone agrees on what's wrong, that's a goal. If everybody agrees on what's right, leave it the fuck alone. Whether you love it or hate it, if it's working, leave it alone. So when setting goals, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier with everything is urgent but not everything is a priority. And the easiest way for me anyway, in my 15 years of bringing startups to 10, 15, $20 million in revenue is the simplest, I don't wanna hear about your campaigns and the, the, the VC that's asking for the debt and the banking problems and that you broke your foot and then you have to go to your daughter's soccer. What's right, wrong, missing, and let's start there. And then we can set goals moving forward. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. I also see um, a great question in the chat. How do you find mentors? Are there any resources or places to go to help you find them? Absolutely. So first of all, startout.org. If you're an LGBTQ entrepreneur, apply to our mentorship program, Latinas in Tech. You can get in contact with Cecilia um, to get in touch with their mentorship program. I also recommend depending upon what um, business you're in, definitely Google search all the different types of accelerators out there that include mentorship programs as part of their accelerators. There's so much available. And frankly, there are so many niche type of mentorship programs too. So definitely think about searching for something specific to your industry as well. Um, 
I want to pause in our last 30 seconds and thank Jonathan, Madeline, and Cecilia. Thank you so much for sharing your perspectives, your insight, and your wisdom. You all are awesome. This was just a fantastic call. Um, Can I send one session? quick re resource as well yeah. for mentors? Uh, my, one of my friends and also a founder herself and has raised capital, she has this organization called Founders Registry. Um, where you can also, it's a whole community of founders that help each other as well. So if you want to invest in yourself, I, I would definitely consider Ana Pompa's uh, uh, organization, Founders Registry. It's great. Founders Registry. I love it. Thank you so much, everybody. Happy Pride. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. And we look forward Thank to seeing you, you soon. All. Take care. Bye.